I'm going to show you how super counters actually work and more importantly how to beat them. I have seen a lot of guides talking about super counters and how to do them and while there are a few good guys out there I feel like the majority of them either fail to explain in depth why and how super counters work or just straight up wrong entirely. And more importantly I haven't seen any videos showcasing how to stop your opponent from doing them. So because of this I decided to do some research. I went around asking the best from some of the most knowledgeable pros from Budokai 3 to arguably the best Sparking Zero player at the moment and after bugging them with question after question I think I have a pretty good understanding. Huge shout out to Grandmaster Hawks, Voxelizing, and an Italian player named Yosha for helping me do the research for this video. The link to their stuff will be in the description below. To catch those who don't already know up to speed, super counters are a type of counter that can be performed when any physical attack or grab makes contact with you by pressing up in your rush attack button at the same time. This can be done even if you are in a combo or taking back shots, and if performed successfully will knock your opponent away. But let's get a little more deep. For starters, you're actually not supposed to time your super counter to when the opponent attack connects. You want to time it slightly after. Let me explain. So your character model and your hurt box aren't exactly overlapping in this game. So right here I have a clip of a uh, super counter being performed. And what you're going to notice is right here, you're going to notice that Vegito's kick is actually going to go through my chest, as you can see right here. And notice how my character hasn't gotten hit yet. And then right there, boom, that's when the super counter gets triggered. But as you can see, there's like a little time frame before that actually happens where his foot just straight up goes through my character model without registering as a hit. I made a little graphic to make this a little easier to understand. You know, I'm an artist, thank you so much. <sighs> I try my best. Let's just say this is the opponent, right? This is your opponent, and this is you. And this red box here is any attack they do. It's like a punch or a kick, whatever, right? So what happens in this game is when somebody throws an attack out and once it reaches your character model, which is this, the blue one right here, the game does not determine that an attack has hit yet, even though it's inside your character model. The game actually determines when you get hit by this black bar right here. This. Think of this as an invisible box always following slightly behind your character. And whenever a move comes into contact with that box, that's when you take damage, not your actual character model. This small window of when an attack comes into contact with your character model, but hasn't actually hit you yet, is actually when you want to input the super counter. It's a good visual indicator to when to time it. Boom, right there. And if you input it around these two frames right here, you're going to get the super counter as shown in this clip. An important thing to note is that you don't actually have to input up in your rush attack button at the same time. You can press up and then press your rush attack button one after the other and that can still result in a successful super counter. One way of inputting it isn't necessarily better than the other from my experience. This just goes down to personal preference but the more you know. Another visual cue you can look for is whenever your opponent attacks and produces this colorful smear, like right here, as you can see these lines appear, that is actually a good indicator to when to time the super counter because again, as you can see, it is lining up with the other visual cue of his kick going through the character model. Different characters have different colors that appear when they attack, but as you can see from the last example, the timing of this color appearing roughly lines up with the window to trigger a successful super counter. Speaking of that window, Sparking Zero runs on 60 frames per second. And the window for a successful super counter is 2 frames, which basically means you have to time your super counter within 1 1 30th of a second to do it properly. This might sound like a hard thing to time since the window is so small, but you can attempt a super counter repeatedly until you trigger it, kinda. This is because while there is a cooldown to input, which means if you attempt the super counter but you miss the timing, the game locks you out from trying again, the lockout is only 12 frames, or only 0.2 seconds. This means theoretically you could attempt a super counter 5 different times per second. Because of this, triggering a super counter is easier than you'd think despite it having a strict 2 frame input window. Before we get to the next part of the video, I want to take a second to thank you guys for hitting 10k subs with me. The recent influx of support has been insane, and if you found this video helpful or you just want to show some love, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because I plan on making more type of videos like this in the future. Alright, now that we know what super counters is and the nuances behind it, let me show you guys how to stop it. So due to how strong this mechanic is, you can't prevent the opponent from using it 100% of the time. That's impossible. Instead, our goal here is to make it as hard as possible for our opponent to use it while also maximizing our damage output at the same time. The first thing we can do is slow down and speed up our rush attack timings. As you can see, you can actually delay your button presses and still be able to combo your opponent. 
So because of this, we can change the timing of our attacks, making it harder for them to time the super counter. Remember, super counter is a two frame input window, so switching the timings to when the opponent has to input them will make it a lot harder to trigger because we're speeding up or slowing down the rhythm of our attacks. The next thing we can do is just reset the combo entirely. This is good because the beginning hits of a combo will always do more damage than the later hits of one. This is due to a mechanic in the game that scales your damage the longer a combo goes on and it makes sense right? You can't have too long of a combo doing the same damage as the start of a combo you're just going to die in one combo. Basically the more you hit the opponent in succession the less each hit does. If you do a really long combo the chances of someone triggering a super counter is basically guaranteed or at least extremely high. So if we're going to trigger it anyways, it's better to reset the combo early to get that good damage scaling at the beginning of the combos due to you just consistently restarting the combo counter. Sweeps are really good at this. Not only do they reset the combo counter giving you more damage for the next combo, sweeps are slower than normal rush attacks and you can even charge them to make them even slower. Because of this you can really throw off somebody's super counter timing while also resetting the combo counter so you get the best scaling possible, getting you the best of both worlds. If you're comboing a front facing opponent and you know they're just mashing super counter trying to trigger it, you can actually just stop your rush attack chain halfway through and sidestep. Remember the input for super counter is up plus the attack button or the rush button. So if you were to stop your rush chain mid combo and they were still trying to input the super counter, especially because a lot of people just mash it in the middle of a rush chain, What's going to happen is they are just going to get a rush chain themselves because if they're still mashing it and you stop the combo, what are they doing? They're pressing attack because they're trying to super counter. This allows you to sidestep behind them and get a backwards facing combo, which gives you way more combo options than a front facing combo. If you are willing to spend key, you could just use a super. It's one of the few things in the game that cannot be super countered. So because of that, it's actually really effective at just getting guaranteed damage. So keep that in mind. But if you really want to stop your opponent from being able to super counter entirely, you should just use Key Blast in your combos. Since they are not physical hits, the opponent cannot super counter them, and basically every character has them. It does cost Key, but being able to put your opponent in effectively a true combo is more than worth it. Bonus points if you have a character that can loop charge Key Blast because that just does a lot of damage. But yeah, I just wanted to make this video for the community because I think the information surrounding super counters is very vague and especially the information surrounding how to stop people from super counters is basically non-existent right now. So like always, if you guys like this type of content, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I do plan on making videos like this more in the future and I'm going to catch you guys in the next video. Peace.